Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are going to be changing the oil in our Toyota Tundra. So for starters, I'm going to be using Royal Purple. Uh, currently we have Mobile One Fully Synthetic in there. So we're gonna swap that out with some Royal Purple High Performance Oil. This is the Zero W20. Again, this is Zero W20 Fully Synthetic. I was not able to find this at my local auto parts stores or my local Walmart, my favorite place to be, favorite place to be, but I wasn't, I wasn't able to find it. So I had to order these uh, oil off of uh, Amazon. They were fortunately uh, able to provide this. We also have our oil filter housing tool. So this basically unleashes the oil filter housing. All right. And I also purchased off of eBay. This was from, I can't remember the seller, but I think it was a Toyota dealership out Arizona. Okay, I think it was Arizona. So this is the part number for the oil filter for the Toyota Tundra. Again, this is the 2017 Toyota Tundra, which uh, if I'm not mistaken, it goes from 2016 to 2021 or 2022, one of those. But this is the oil filter that you'll need. So we got a paper filter. So this is your filter for your Tundra. Okay. Comes with two rubber gaskets. The bigger rubber gasket is going to be actually for the oil filter housing. So you got another small smaller it's a smaller rubber gasket and that basically goes on the section where so say for instance this is the oil filter housing okay there's a bolt underneath there so you basically remove that bolt okay once you've removed that bolt you take this plastic piece which that plastic piece is included with the oil filter uh, kit so this plastic piece is a drain plug okay so you got the housing you remove that bolt from underneath and then you insert this into the housing, okay? And what that's basically going to do, is going to allow that oil inside the filter to pipe on through throughout this plastic piece onto your, your drain pan. So after you do that, once you remove this plastic piece, it's going to snag that, this, that smaller rubber gasket, okay? It's going to remove that. So what you're going to do is you're going to replace it with the small one. Okay, so that small one's gonna go up underneath there. So we got our parts here. All we need is our wrench and sockets and we're ready to roll. Let's get to work. All right guys, so this is the 2017 Toyota Tundra. This is my lifted truck. It's got the three and a half inch lift on here. Let's see. Spacers for the left and the front. It's also got it in the rear. For me to remove the skid plate, even though my truck is lifted, I like to have a little bit uh, more elbow reach and not, you know, rubbing my arm against the ground. So I'm going to put my truck on the jack stand so I can remove the front skid plate so what i usually do when it comes to the ramps i will line them up first got the truck in the position i like kind of get that center tread to be up along the ramp do that each side so center print of the tire along it's a really wide tire so it's going to overlap some but primary thing is to get center along and then I would look at the rent kind of eyeball it to see if we're along the same path okay and just drive her up
Again, we got some, I call it tire cleavage. Look at that tire cleavage right there. You see that? It's just the sidewall. The sidewall tire cleavage, but the center of the tire is alongside. All right, guys, we're up underneath here. That's the driver's side tire. Again, that's the driver's side tire. So just want to show you guys exactly where the screws are located on this hole right here. This, this is one of the bolts that you'll unscrew, okay? So you'll see one here, okay? Driver's side. You got one in the middle. That's for the middle. You see that? That's going to be the last one that you take out, okay? Last one you take out. All right. You got one on the passenger side, okay? So, moving up front, you got, you got to remove this. I'm loosen this uh, front bumper cover underneath. So, you got one screw here, one screw here. And one screw here. So that's three total. Three total. Then you got a bolt here. All right. And there's supposed to be a bolt here. But as you can see, when I took the truck to the dealership to get an oil change, they forgot a bolt. Just to let you know, we are using a 12 socket. All right. With a uh, extended extension. This is an extended extension. So I got the driver's side and passenger side bolts off, as you can hear. Now, what I am doing is loosening the front ones. So this, these little small three screws, they're 10 millimeter. So what you want to use the 10 millimeter for them? They can be tedious to get off, so be careful. They're on the strip. Again, we still have our middle bolt on so that way this bad boy doesn't come crashing down on us. Putting this truck on ramps gave me extra space to maneuver. This is like how I like to work. I don't like to work like like this having a vehicle on my face and I'm just like Ugh. I don't like to like to be able to move around here and there. That's how I like to work. All right, so we got our jack here. This is a three-ton low-profile Pittsburgh jack. Again, it's a three-ton low-profile Pittsburgh jack. The low-profile jacks are much, they have a higher peak than the regular jacks, okay? So now we got the jack up. The jack is almost at its peak. So we're gonna allow the undercarriage to lay on the jack, all right? It's a little tricky, I'll well, show you. Please don't tell me that the shop stripped my uh, bolt. Hopefully they did. You see that bolt right there? Just look at that. You see that damage on that bolt? And it has a screw. It has a screw. You see that screw? You can barely see it. And that screw is messed up. Look at that. There's no way that I can use that. That's like the safety net if this thing ever gets stripped. I'm gonna show you what the screw looks like. It looks just like this. You see that? Just like that. Finally got the needle nose to grip on and now I'm able to use this little small flathead to It's got these spacers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some glue and we're gonna use the glue to uh, secure the spacers back on. Because it's lift the truck, you take your spacers and you put them up on air. 
So I'm gonna take the spaces that I had in my hand, these, and I'm gonna glue it here. So you see it's on the jack stand, so it's easier for us to be able to show. So basically these go here and it's, it's a tedious job to get them on. So what I'm going to do is use this. I'm not going to apply too much. I just want it to be nice and sticky. All right, and it's nice and sticky. Just sit it on down. So this is for the people that got these lift kits. And I'm just looking at it, make sure we got enough space for our screw to go through. Right, it looks good. And we're gonna do this one to this one too to keep these things from moving when I try to put this thing back up. And we're gonna apply the office tape and we're gonna wrap it around these. And uh, it's basically gonna help us to keep these things from moving so that we won't be go ahead and uh, get our guard back up. We can easily take our bolts, slip the bolts through, and be on our merry way. All right, guys, we're up underneath the tundra. So to the front right here, this is your filter. So that's the housing for the filter. Filter is inside. And moving downwards, this is our oil pan, and that's our drain plug right there. This is up underneath the tundra. Okay, again, from the front to the driver's side, behind the radiator and the clutch fan, okay, you will find yourself the oil filter housing. And then to the passenger side, so this is the passenger side wheel. Moving on, you'll find yourself the oil drain to show you the drain pan that I am using. This is a 16 quarts to 15 liter capacity. Uh, the thing I love about this is that uh, you can basically twist this thing here so that way your fluids can drain in and then you'll twist it back up and uh, you can undrain it there it's got this leader rail this is the brand flow tool this should basically shoot down to here so we'll make adjustments as needed so we got a 14 milliliter on us somewhat control it yeah that's nice and cool all right here we go a little splatter on the tire but, but I think we did a decent job trying to control the spill we still working man we don't give up so, as you can see it made a little mess clean it up now that we have this fully drained we can go ahead and grab our oil drain plug as you can see it has this little rubber rubber sealant that's what keeps the oil from dripping out you should replace your crush washers so you got these crush washers okay and this is basically going to replace the current crush washer that's on your drain plug, all right? So these are the crush washers that I have. That's the part number. This is the uh, actual label, but I believe that's the actual part number. Just 
and tighten it first. Hand tighten. Now, it's not too tight. My only struggle was <laughs> me trying to navigate from underneath, but uh, she's good. No leaks. Just eye that while we're here. take our special filter here and we're gonna line it up to there's some grooves on this filter so you're gonna line it up with the grooves As you guys can see, this is our nice, delicious, dirty, scrunchious looking filter. Delicious. And as you can see, our removal tool was successfully able to remove it without breaking the housing. The housing is plastic. Again, the housing is plastic. If you break it, you have to replace it. So I highly recommend that if you don't have the tool or if you think that you might end up breaking the housing of the oil filter to buy a new one. Just cleaning the base. Just wanted to show you guys. So there's a gasket right here. There's a rubber gasket that needs to be removed. So I don't have a pick on me. So I'm just gonna use this to bolt the kind of pick it up it's got a place for where it needs to be at okay so we're gonna move that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this one and we're also gonna install this one this one goes on the bottom so this will go right here it's more so beneficial to try to put this on when you actually put that nut on so what you want to do is to put the uh, to install a new one. Let's see how dry that is. So what you want to do is you want to get a nice glob of oil. Put that down. Take your fingers and just moisturize the the oil around it. Got some on this leaf. See how that's nice and moisturized now. So now what you want to do is take it the o-ring and start going around slowly 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 take your time don't force it slowly get it down there all right so now we got that o-ring going and we got this o-ring on as well so all we got to do is take our new oil filter okay and just stick it on in there that felt good going in so that means we're not cross threading so I'm pretty sure majority of people probably got a tool like this. So I'm use this tool, finish tighten it. Right, I'm going slow. So I don't want to over tighten. 
I don't want to damage anything. I don't want to break anything. Just about half. There we go. All right, I'm good with that. All right, so now we're gonna put this bolt on. I still got the rubber gasket on, so that's perfect. My uh, hand tighten this to make sure it's like a cross thread. It's perfect. Now let's go ahead and tighten this bad boy. All right, there we go. Hand tighten. Not with the Alright. Let's clean her up. For now on, I'm going back to my principal of uh, changing my own oil. The only thing about these things is that they fill up so that on fast. I'll post a picture of how much oil this thing takes. And uh, you guys take it from there. So we're done filling the fluid. We're just checking for leaks. I don't have any leaks down here. Everything is absolutely perfect. And we don't have any leaks here neither. Okay. So what we can do is start the truck up and check for leaks again. Then the last part would be to basically put our cover back on. As you can see, this bad boy they're in there nice and sturdy so they're not gonna move when this moves the truck is running no leakage I don't usually do self videos but are we gonna do a self video today baby all right, guys, so as you can see, I'm underneath the tundra. We got the, uh, what do you call this thing again? Uh, why, do I, why do I keep forgetting what this thing is called? You know, I keep, I keep forgetting what this thing is called. But anyway, we got the undercarriage shield on, okay? <laughs> We're going to call it undercarriage shield for right now because my, my head has a brain fart. But anyway, it's a pain in the rear to get this thing up while laying on the ground. Sometimes people have to use your knees, you gotta use your foot, you gotta use your arms, you gotta use your back. I tell you, it hurts. So, what I always do is, as I showed you guys before, you use your jack. You put your jack, you have your jack up across here, and your jack is basically gonna hold this up, upward, to allow you to be able to get the screws back inside here, okay? You always put the front end on first. Okay? That front end settles up first. So there's clips. Like up, up underneath here, there's these clips that you have to basically fork in on each side. So you get the front up first.
Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Peace.